Hello everyone, this is Sean from EverythingVM.com. Uh, today we're going to cover VirtualBox. Uh, VirtualBox used to be made by Sun, but since Sun got bought by Oracle, uh, it's now Oracle VirtualBox and has since been rebranded. Uh, to get VirtualBox, you just go to VirtualBox.org and click on the Downloads page located on the left, and then you select whichever uh, when you want to download. As you can see, they've got a Windows version, a Mac version, a Linux version, Solaris version. There is also a open source edition, so if you felt so inclined, you could download the source code and work with that. Uh, that's beyond the scope of what we're going to cover, but uh, I to save time, I've already downloaded VirtualBox. It's about a 75 megabyte download. Right now, it's been growing over the last couple years. Uh, but to get started, you just double click on it after you've downloaded it. And yes, we want to run this. And you just go through the wizard. So we say next. We accept the license agreement. Uh, it asks what uh, various items you want to install. I always install everything because that gives you lots of options. Uh, here's where it's going to install to. We say next and yes I want to create some shortcuts to it now <clears throat> here it's saying that it's we're going to lose our uh, network connection uh, that's fine so we're just going to click yes and then we'll click install so at, when I click install it will install and it'll interrupt the network connection for a moment so we'll go ahead and click install and so there it's installing Now this install might take a couple minutes, so I'm just going to pause the recording while this uh, progress bar moves along. All right, we're back. Uh, as you can see, the installation is finished. That took about three minutes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave this box checked because we want to use VirtualBox right now. As you can see, it added a shortcut on my desktop, so when we, whenever we want to use VirtualBox, we can just double click on that. So let's click Finish. Alright, so now we're in VirtualBox. Now the interface is fairly simple, uh, but to get started we're going to want to create a new virtual machine. So let's click New. And here's the wizard that we go through to create a virtual machine. So let's click Next. We give the virtual machine a name. We'll call this uh, Ubuntu because we will install Ubuntu Linux in here. And it's Linux and it's Ubuntu and you can see it just sort of figured it out based on what I typed. But we can click in here and select a different operating system and you know a different flavor of Linux. Uh, what you select here, I mean you can make it work with just about any selection but it picks certain defaults based on whatever operating system you select here. So we're going to go with Ubuntu. We'll click Next. Now this is asking how much memory we want to allocate to the virtual machine. So this isn't necessarily how much memory the virtual machine will use, but it's how much, what's the maximum amount of memory the virtual machine can use. So uh, my machine in this computer has 4,096 megabytes of memory. Uh, I'm going to give it 1,000 megabytes of memory for this virtual machine. So that way it should run fairly smooth. Uh, so that will leave three gigabytes left for my computer to run. Now VirtualBox doesn't recommend going over the 50% mark which is why it turns red right here, orange and red, uh, but as long as you're in the green you're probably okay. So let's click Next. Alright, so now is where we create the, vir the hard drive. Uh, so the recommended size for this virtual machine is eight gigabytes. Uh, really you'll, you'll have to decide on whether or not that's enough for you, but we'll just uh, click next and then we'll click next. Now here it's asking do we want to dynamically expand the hard drive or do we want fixed size storage? The difference between the two being if I say fixed size storage our 8 gigabyte hard drive will for the virtual machine will immediately take up 8 gigabytes on my host machine dynamically expanding storage means it will take up almost no space uh, to start with and then as I start adding files to my virtual machine it will start uh, eating up space on my host machine so I, I usually pick dynamically expanding storage you get a little bit better performance out of fixed size storage uh, but I 
you know, in most cases, I've found dynamically expanding storage works fine, so especially in a test environment. So we're going to stick with that. So let's click Next. And here's where we actually pick the size. Uh, the previous screen was just saying they recommend 8 gigabytes. Uh, I'm going, since we're doing dynamically si sized storage, I'm going to go ahead and put in 25 gigabytes, just so that uh, I won't regret having a smaller size later on down the road and having to go in and resize the uh, system disk for this virtual machine. So let's click Next. All right, and so it's all created. It, we've got a dynamically sized hard drive. It's going to be stored at this location on my computer, and it's going to be 25 gigabytes. So let's click Finish, and Finish. And there is our virtual machine. Now, our virtual machine's been created, but if we turn it on, I'll go ahead and hit Start, it now gives us a wizard and we have to select a media source uh, so now this media source is uh, the CD image that it will use to boot from right now our virtual our virtual machines hard drive is blank so it won't be able to start so in, to start up for the first time it needs to have some sort of install disk so I'm now going to click this button over here on the right to select the uh, media source. Now, if you've got a uh, CD-ROM drive, you could just put a CD in the CD drive. However, this computer actually does not have a CD drive, so I'm using a CD image to boot from. So let's go ahead and click on the button here. And here is the CDs that the software has used before. Uh, I've had VirtualBox installed on this computer before, so it actually remembers uh, that I've used this CD image before. Uh, I'm going to click Add and now it lets me browse to the image that I want to use. Now I don't want to use either one of those. I want to go to my computer and I'll go to my network drive and here is the Ubuntu CD which I downloaded from the Ubuntu website. Uh, so we'll click Open and you see it added it to my list of CD images that I can use and I click select and I click and now you see it's got the Ubuntu disk selected We click finish next and then finish and now it's uh, now it's starting up so it gives you a few dialog boxes here telling you you know what's going on uh, this first one is saying that it's not optimized blah 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 at this point we can just click OK and ignore it here it's saying that the virtual machine may run into an error because some audio devices could not be opened. We're not going to worry about that uh, because that we're not worried about audio at this time. We'll say OK. And now you see that Ubuntu is starting up. Now Ubuntu is something uh, comes with something called a live CD. That means that you can boot off the CD, it loads the entire environment, and then you do the installer from within the uh, Linux environment versus, say, Windows, where you go through an installer first, and then you can finally get to the Windows desktop. So while uh, because it's a live CD, it can take a very long time to start up. So I'm just going to pause the recording again while uh, Linux starts up, and then we'll 